Oh, let's talk about this quickly. Because I want to set the record straight for some of my fucking critiques, for critic critics out there, right? Um, this video that I was watching, I watched part one, we'll watch a bit of part two later, but not now, about Kal- Kalila, Kalila Kuhn, the most sadistic woman in comedy part two, right? This guy called XLP put together this documentary has been gaining traction and people have been loving it and being all over the moon about it. I said in the previous stream that I don't necessarily get the whole Kalila hate especially the levels that they're going at. I understand she can be annoying. I played a video that I still laugh at to this day where she basically makes the whole George Floyd death all about her, starts weeping, maybe because she feels guilty that she hasn't fucked a black dude in ages or something. I don't know. It's fucking bizarre. One of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life. She's just, a, you know, and she's got that annoying, like, baby voice thing when she's clearly a woman in her 40s. There's something, there's stuff about it that's strange and weird. But the way the documentary painted out to be this like mastermind puppet thing, like they, they tried to make her seem as if she was like, who's thing is, um, who's Kim Jong Un's sister? Do you remember that rumor that came out that Kim Jong Un's sister was like the really lethal one who was the one that was responsible for murdering their uncle or whatever, maybe who got like, you know, um, assassinated at an airport or some shit. That's what they made her seem to be. Like Kalila was that level of sadistic, was that level of evil. When really and truly, she probably took advantage of some guy who clearly needed babying, clearly needed a mum, and he didn't mind being taken advantage of because he needed some sort of like trophy or something to show that he was successful. I don't know, whatever he got from having her next to his side. So it's a kind of mutually beneficial scam, mutually beneficial, you know, pieces of shit to each other. So I didn't really give a fuck about it. And I said so much in the stream. Then, when the fucking stream ends, everyone's hitting my comments up saying, oh, you're a Kalila, what, what do people call me? They call me a Kalila simp. A fucking simp for Kalila. I don't give a fuck about this lady. Literally don't care the slightest bit about her at all. I don't even watch Tiger Belly like that. But just because I don't agree or don't fucking jump on the bandwagon of thinking because this woman clearly loves sex a lot to the point where she exhausted Bobby Lee and wanted to go fuck other guys in Hawaii, like all of them, that somehow because I I don't agree that liking sex is a crime <laughs> everyone's attacking me and calling me a simp they're calling me a simp because I don't I'm not attacking them and think like she's evil it's very bizarre and I don't know what's going on honestly I, I, I said it before I really don't get the level of hate you guys have for this woman like I don't know if it's like suppressed feelings if maybe if it's like or maybe you know what it might be to be fair to you guys it might be that some of you might be OG Bobby Lee fans so you might remember a time in history when Bobby Lee wasn't with Kalila and he was single and he was somewhat kind of in the streets or maybe he had a different kind of personality and maybe you attribute the podcast going to shit or Bobby Lee turning into an annoying guy or whatever it may be with Kalila's introduction. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe she kind of represents like a shift in Bobby Lee and people don't like that. I'm not too sure. Whatever it is, it's strange. It's odd. It's weird. Um, and I'm not going to stop calling out the fact that it's strange that you guys are making documentaries about her writing shit poetry. That where she's trying to be edgy and, you know, whatever. Girls write poetry it is what it is. Girls write poetry, dogs write poetry it is what it is. Everything, everyone kind of goes through that, especially if you go through a heart, heartbreak. I remember having a book that I used to have where every time some girl said no to me, I'd fucking write stories about it and open up my heart. And it was fucking painful and sobby and pathetic to read back. And I burned them all, right? We all, we've all done some form of that self healing thing before. It is what people do. Um, some people take it more serious than others. Some people start doing all that slam poetry stuff like to be and if you are in there, you take it and that fucking that kind of black poetry shit people do, which is fucking annoying. Everyone's done it before in the past, but come on. Is that really a crime? Should you really be having videos with fucking half a million views on it, making it seem as that come on, not all of us who are saying no. <laughs> fuck you mr singh said no all of us trust me what well, i did because i got many rejections so i got i had a lot of heartbreak to share i was like drake before drake mate but yeah i don't know man i don't know i said her cartoon image was sexy you guys in this i don't care about the lady i don't fancy her don't give a fucking fuck i'm not gonna fly over there to see her don't care nothing about it fucking these guys man you said her okay imagine i did see an animation i thought it was <laughs> does that mean i'm a simp <laughs> honestly the comedy fans who also like the girls in comedy are always a bit weird anyway they're a bit possessive i think 
um, I don't know. It's, there's a strange energy going on with comedy fans because I, I think all of them are like. I think if you were to ask all com- female comedians to really open up their DMs from they get from fans, I think people have been for shocks. You guys, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a bit strange personally for me. The guy who put the thing together is probably the worst victim of them all. My man sat there p- pulling all these fucking going on her old Facebook and all this stuff, and uh, I don't know. I think that's. Yo, you have to kind of check yourself with that one, innit? Maybe or maybe not. I don't know. Who cares? Anyway, moving on. Moving on because I, I generally, genuinely do not care about Collider. De- don't care about Bobby Lee. Don't care about any of these people. It's just funny to watch it from from the outside in. I just don't. I just could never see myself making a documentary or caring enough to be like, no, nah, man, she's actually really bad, bro. You should look into it. It's like, really? I looked into it. She likes sex. I looked into it. She might have taken advantage of fucking Bobby Lee. I looked into it. She might have used the opportunity to, to, of being next to a really well-known comic to boost herself, right? And give herself a flipping, you know, um, uh, another career, kind of, clout, you know, leech off his clout a bit. Leech off his clout a bit. Is that a crime? Really? If you if you had a partner and, and she wasn't doing anything, or she was just some regular girl, when you want to help her out, give her a job maybe help let let her do the fucking merch if she doesn't like that maybe let her do have something else come on a show whatever i don't know that's what everyone would do in it like i don't know i don't know i don't know who gives a fuck